everything popular is wrong. Um, this was actually by most, one of my most popular articles that I wrote. Um, it was titled, Everything Popular is Wrong, and it was about skating speed and knee bend. And um, I meant to do a follow-up article, I think it's already written, um, about arm swing. And it kind of reminded me this morning, um, because I was on the ice with a young player, and I realized he was not swinging his arms at all. Um, and I think it was because he had been told previously to swing his arms forward. Now, <clears throat> let me just backtrack here. There, the reason I say everything popular is wrong is, you know, obviously that's not always the case. But there are some harmful uh, coaching. There's some harmful coaching advice that is out there. And the reason I say harmful is because it literally is um, it is wasting players time money energy and by energy I mean emotion um, you know uh, your you know your physical energy the time you're spending because here is what's happening I see this all the time I see coach getting mad at player right the player saying you know getting mad at themselves they're frustrated, they're upset, their body language goes, they slam their stick. Um, coaches, you know, they got the whistle, they're mad, they're angry. And then the coach says, do this. And this is drone coaching, wrong, harmful advice. And the player goes, okay, okay, I'm going to do that. Right? And, ah, I'm mad, slam my stick. And I see this all the time. I see this all the time. And the player goes, tries it again, messes up again. Coach is even angrier. <laughs> I see this again and again and again. And the problem is that these coaches are giving the wrong advice. They're giving the popular advice, but it's wrong. It's very wrong. Okay? So I wrote down a list of things that are wrong um, that I see coaches um, uh, coaching all the time. So here's the first one. Look ahead of the player to pass, pass to where the player is going. Now you're going to say, oh, well, that's an obvious one. We'll talk about that. Swing your arms forward. It's more efficient. Stupid. <laughs> hold your stick like you're shaking someone's hand. So hold it like this, right? Hold it there with your knuckles kind of on the side, right? Wrong. The best stick handlers don't do that. Um, shift your weight while you're shooting. Right, I see this all the time. People say, oh, make sure to really shift your weight while you're shooting. And I was, I was coaching that for a while myself, and it was wrong. It was wrong. And I, but I realized that, and I, and I made that adjustment. It was popular as to tell everyone to shift their weight, but it's wrong. Um, have fast feet. This is the most horrible advice ever. No, they, they all compete. They all compete for the worst advice. But people don't understand what having fast feet does mentally um, to someone who doesn't know how to skate properly. Now they just start moving their feet instead of skating fast, right? What you should be saying is skate fast. Um, I also had another one in here as I was saying it that uh, I don't remember. Um, go ahead and rip me apart, those who are watching, and tell me I'm wrong or ask me questions. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to kind of deconstruct all of these ones that are here. Um, and then also point you to an area where you can go, and a lot of you already do do this, um, where you can go to the Train 2.0 membership area where we have the right information. And this is stuff that's tested. If it doesn't work, if it didn't work on me and it doesn't work on kids, um, I get rid of it. It doesn't, it doesn't, doesn't exist if, it's, if, it's, um, if it doesn't work. Okay, so, you know, imagine yourself, right, imagine your kid, you know, or imagine you getting yelled at by your coach, and the coach is saying to you, do it this way, do it this way, oh, it popped into my head, receiving passes, okay, I'm going to write this down so I can go back to it, but cushioning passes, every coach says, cushion the pass, no, don't cushion the pass, I don't know, where that came from, but 
It seems logical, but doesn't work. Um, anyway, where was I there? So in the Train 2.0 membership area, it doesn't exist. The advice, advice doesn't exist if it doesn't work. And so imagine yourself, you know, on the ice, getting advice, smiling, because what's happening is working, right? Coach gives you advice, boom, you follow that advice, boom, the coach is happy with you because it worked. Okay, not you frustrated at yourself, not you watching your kid frustrated at themselves because they're messing up. When whose fault was it? It was the drone coach's shitty advice. That simple. Uh, I'm tired of seeing that. Uh, I'm on the phone with parents and players all day and undoing harm that other coaches have done. Right? And you know what? I'm blasting coaches here. There's a lot of really good ones, but there's more drone coaches. Um, I think the drone coaches are like easier and cheaper. I don't know. Maybe that's why they made the switch to clones instead of drones in Star Wars. I don't know. I'm a big fan. Okay, let's break through these one by one. And please call BS on me if my logic is not um, sound. My reasoning isn't sound. That's why I'm doing this. Okay. Um, first one, look ahead of the player to pass. This ignores, this is really like complicating for your brain. It's like, um, you know, like saying, oh, walk over there, but instead you try to do three front flips and a handspring, right? It, it, it's very difficult for your brain mechanics, your eye mechanics to figure that out. What's more simple is just simply track the stick with your eyes and follow it and just allow your eyes to track it. See what your eyes do. You can kind of look at my eyes. Now, um, I'm half Chinese, so I don't know if everyone will be able to I'll open them big. Um, but uh, um, so your eyes do either a saccade, meaning a jump, boom, boom, boom. You can kind of see, I'll kind of look around the room here. You'll see how they jump, boom, 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 or they'll track smoothly. So if I were to look at my finger, right, th that's what it does. So it's really easy for your eyes to just simply track the object and follow it and then kind of assume where it's going and hit it. Right? So if you just do that with a stick, if you just look carefully at the blade of the stick and let your eyes track it and then aim to hit that, um, your brain is going to do a pretty good job doing that. And you know, obviously beginners do less good than NHLers, um, but if you just practice those mechanics of looking at the stick, your body is going to naturally adjust and hit that stick. Right? Um, but what I see with, with younger kids and even older kids is they're like, oh, I'm looking to where they're going. But it's like this mental, like, gymnastics that needs to happen with your eyes and with your brain to like guess when they're going to connect and then you get kids afraid to pass it hard because they don't now trust their mechanics right they don't trust their eye mechanics um, so use do the simple thing which is look at the stick track it um, trust your eye mechanics trust your body mechanics pass it hard and it will work now this is uncommon advice but that's because no coaches have studied um, the science of vision. I did that a bit. Um, oh, I should actually find my book. I think I mentioned it. Decision Training Vision in Sport and the Quiet Eye or something like that by Joan Vickers. Um, that's a great book if you're interested, but it will cost you about 60, 70 bucks. Okay, swing your arms forward instead of side to side. People say, oh, it's more efficient. Okay, but the, here's the thing. Is when you skate, you actually push laterally. You push side to side. Um, so why would you then swing your arms forward? It takes more core strength to swing your arms forward or to go forward and push side to side. It takes more energy uh, than just simply letting your arms swing side to side. In fact, the harder you swing your arms side to side, the harder you're going to be able to push. Watch a figure skater, um, watch a, or not a figure skater, a, a speed skater, um, and watch the best NHLers. They do not swing their arms Forward, uh, that's very uh, BSE. Everything popular is wrong. Now, hold your stick like you're shaking a hand. So, you know, the popular grip is over top, right? So your knuckles are on the side, the way NHLers do it, and the best stick handlers I met. And this is what I simply do is there's like, you know, three, four guys on your team who are the best stick handlers, right? You just they're the best. So I just go to them. This is like this is not rocket science here. 
right? I go to them, I say, how do you hold your stick? And they show me. And it's different than how you go to the crappiest player and you say, how do you hold your stick? They literally just hold their stick different. That's it. That secret's in the membership area. You gotta pay for that one. <laughs> I'm giving you a lot of stuff for free. And it's worth it. Train 2.0 membership area. I promise you, it's gonna save you money. It's gonna save you time, money, and energy, and disappointment. Um, and the members who are currently members, maybe they can chime in and back me up here. Um, if they're watching. So that, and if you are a member that's in the NHL code, I have uh, a video called wrist position and that explains exactly the, the position that the best players uh, that I've played with, with the best hands, how they hold their stick. And I made that adjustment. And nowadays I look at my, on the video of myself, I'm going, oh, that looks kind of cool. Okay, it looks like he has good hands. Um, and let me be clear, I st stick handled for like, Every drill you could imagine. I bought every program. I bought every aid. I, did, I was in uh, junior hockey. And my poor roommate would be there while I'm stick handling these big, heavy steel balls on on this roof or on the, in this room, and it was on the second floor. So you know, underneath, everyone could hear me rolling these big steel balls back and forth, and that was great. My wrist got a lot stronger. I, my technique improved. But if I just adjusted my wrist a little bit, everything would have changed. Everything would have changed. Um, so um, hold your stick differently. Your grip will change. Your stick handling mechanics will change like that. Um, shift your weight while shooting. I see this all the time where coaches say, oh, ma really make sure to get a good weight shift in. Now, this might be true, but the thing is, is that uh, good, uh, a weight shift is going to disguise good mechanics. So if you, if you have enough weight shift, enough power in your legs, um, it'll disguise good or proper upper upper body mechanics. Um, I've got some questions here. I'll get to those in a second. Uh, shift your weight. So yeah, so shifting your weight while shooting. If you use heavy, heavy, heavy uh, weight shifts, you're disguising um, upper body um, mechanics. And so you're, you have sloppy upper body mechanics. So first you need to teach the upper body mechanics. Um, and the best way to do that is like with a snapshot. Again, I teach that in the membership area. Um, it's in a, a camp called the NHL Code. And Daryl Belfry says this too. He says you should learn the snapshot before the wrist shot. Right? I was just having this conversation last night. You should learn the snapshot before the wrist shot. I think the reason he's saying that is because you learn the mechanics of the upper body first. And then when you do learn to weight transfer, um, you know, then you have a bunch of power with the proper mechanics. So um, shift your weight while shooting is bad advice in the wrong con context. Most of the time it's the wrong context. Okay, have fast feet. Um, the um, uh, Have fast feet. When coaches tell players to have fast feet, what they're telling them to do is to move their feet fast. That's different from skating fast or moving fast or or, or, or covering a lot of distance. That's different. So you're optimizing the wrong thing. You're um, uh, doing, you're saying something different, right? Um, what you really want and, and, and what you get are two different things. So what you really want is speed and what you really get is people moving their feet fast but not gripping the ice. So they don't go fast but they are moving their feet fast. So it's the wrong cue, it's the wrong advice, it's harmful because then I have to reteach players how to skate. Right? Um, the concepts to undo that are in the membership area. Um, cushioning passes is a horrible, horrible advice. Um, it's a it's a really highly skilled thing, um, and cushioning advice or cushioning passes is brutal advice. It's the same as as like I said with the the eyes. Right? It makes it really challenging to. Um, it makes it actually much more challenging to receive a pass than just simply stopping it. Okay, now I'm going to give you a hint here. The cushioning of the pass should occur through your hips. Okay, um, so or with a weight shift. So you should cushion the pass with your body, right? With your so if my if I'm here, I'm going to shift my weight side to side as I receive that pass. So I was like, as I'm getting that pass, I'm shifting with my hips and I'm shifting with my weight to receive that pass but your hands should be firm. Boom, you should stop it, right? You almost lean into it. Um, cushioning pass is a brutal um, coaching advice. 
Um, and that, the concept, the principles behind that is in a course called, um, it's on the hips in the membership area. And I believe I also have a, a part of that in the free trial. Um, okay. Uh, what do I do? So here's the question here. What do I do if the, if the person I'm passing to doesn't present their stick to me or are constantly changing the area of it? That's really frustrating. And that's really kind of onus is, is on them. Um, you know, that uh, you got to let them know like, hey, like I'll hit your, I'll hit your tape. Um, but, you know, you know, you need to keep it in the same spot or, you know, let them know. And sometimes they're open. Um, sometimes they're open and then they, 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 they're not open. So now they need to change their spot. That, that happens in a game. That's okay. But uh, sometimes if you just let them know, like, hey, I'll hit you for a pass. Just let me know where. Just put it down in a spot and I'll get to it. Um, that's usually enough to, to get them to understand you. Um, I hope that answers your question. Um, and then if they're, and if they don't, if they're not presenting a stick or they're at all, just like guess where they're going to want it. And, you know, if they're not giving you, if they're not giving you where they want it, you know, the chances are they, they don't want it. So just get rid of it. Just, just don't give it to them. Find a guy with their stick on the ice and hit them. Okay. How much pressure percentage should be, should the skate be pushed into the ice for maximum efficiency? Um, well, I guess like, um, so this goes to the concept of ice pressure, Gene. So, uh, review that in the membership area, go to the Eichel skating camp, um, where we talk about ice pressure and, and review that and review those drills. Um, but I'll also explain that too, but I want you to see those drills. Um, so, you know, you got to think of ground reaction forces and um, and and like vectors, right? So, um, if this is the ice, right? There's two different vectors you could be pushing right on the ground: this vector or this vector, right? Um, and so, you know, this is directly down, and I haven't done biomechanics in a while, but this is directly down, and then this is, if I'm pushing, you know, directly this way, um, you know, the horizontal force, um, you know, that's a different vector, right? Now, this depends on your uh, friction, right? So the sharper your blade, and the, the more at an angle you get this, the more you can push horizontally. Um, essentially, because in hockey, in, in running, um, FYI, the more bounce you get, so the more you actually push down into the ground and the more vertical um, translation you get, uh, the more bounce you have in your stride and the more uh, efficiency you'll actually have. This has been shown that the fast, faster runners have more vertical translation than um, slower runners. Uh, in hockey, that's not the case, right? It's, it's almost entirely lateral. So the more horizontal vector um, vectoring you can get as you skate, the better, right? So if you watch like an Eichel, right? In my video I published yesterday, I said um, his heel pushes, like he pushes through his heel and you can see he rolls his heel under, he rolls his ankle under to get that uh, horizontal vectoring of, of, um, of force to get this incredible amount of speed. So you see guys like him, Larkin, Eichel, these guys are, they've adjusted, they, they've evolved the skating and they're able to get so much more horizontal force um, into the ice. And this is, this is leading them to get way more speed, right? So anything uh, down, right, vertical uh, is essentially dead, dead speed unless you're jumping up to catch a puck. Um, but uh, everything horizontal with these horizontal vectors is going to make you way faster. Um, Crosby is, is the expert at this when it comes to transition and puck protection. He can maintain horizontal force vectoring, right? So pushing horizontally into the ice uh, while under intense pressure um, and protecting the puck and controlling the puck. So that's what makes him, you know, best in the world at that. And McDavid can, can, 
can do these maneuvers at top speed. That's what makes him the best uh, in the world at, uh, at that. Um, yeah. Cool. All right. So, uh, Hookie, uh, you're going to have to, like, you're always on here. So you got to let me know how to pronounce, uh, your name. So, <laughs> uh, is it hook E hook I, um, cut your stick 10 months, uh, 10 centimeters a month ago, shot improved, stick only improved, puck confidence improved. I'm now suddenly a playmaker. I love it. That's awesome. Um, one thing I would like, you know, people kind of come to me with these victories of their, uh, their stick adjustments. And, um, I, f and, and the reason I am not like as bravo as I used to be is because I used to, um, uh, like I used to do this too, right? I'd make an adjustment to my stick and everything would feel better. Um, and, and I was relying on my stick too much. I was relying on the length of the stick, the lie of the stick, the curve of the stick. And I thought it was something to do with the stick. Uh, the truth was is my mechanics sucked, right? I didn't have the right mechanics. I wasn't using the right grip. I wasn't using the right hand to control the puck. I didn't have the right upper body mechanics for my shot, for my stick handling, uh, everything. Yet, I was still able to play at a high level, um, albeit with like a whole, like literally like looking back at, at what I know and what my mechanics were, I wonder how in the world I was able to play the level I was able to play at. Um, I think it was like sheer force of will. Um, but you know, um, what I realized is, is your, your stick length, lie, height, flex, whatever matters way, 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 way less than your mechanics. It might matter, right? It, it might matter. There's probably an optimal stick for each person. There's probably an optimal length stick for each person. However, um, don't let that be a fool or don't let that fool you into thinking it's the stick and not the mechanics, right? You should, and I'll tell you this story, um, I was on the ice with a guy, he played in the NHL, he played in the German League, like the DL, and a few other places, um, and um, he, and he, he, he took the stick, it was I think too long, the wrong flex, the wrong curve, heavy, he took it, his first shot, crap, <laughs> second shot, crap. Third shot, he nailed it. Um, so the point here is it was a horrible stick. It was the wrong stick. Um, but he, he, made, um, he made the adjustment with his mechanics because he was an expert at his mechanics. Um, so, you know, I agree that, you know, good sticks make things easier. A non-broken stick is better than a broken stick. The right curve and length and blah, 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 the right, right length, um, you know, that'll help. But, but don't let that be an excuse for your mechanics. Make sure your mechanics are dialed in. Um, and those mechanics, like I said, are part of the camp called the NHL code, um, which where, where I go over all that. Um, because like I said, I was seeing these players just effortlessly taking these shots. And I'm like, oh, what curve are you using, man? What's, what, oh, my stick's the wrong, the wrong height, color, blah, blah, blah. No, no, no. When I realized, no, 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 it's how they grip the stick. It is, you know, what they're doing with their top hand, what they're doing with their hips. So um, don't fall into the trap. I'm glad it worked out for your stick, but don't fall into that trap. Improve your mechanics. Uh, I'm going to look here. Questions. Uh, my wrist strength improved a lot also. I know she's a lot harder with a longer stick also. The one I'm using at the moment weighs a good amount. Yeah, good. Uh, uh, Okay, <laughs> I think that's the right. Um, let me know if I'm getting better. Um, that's fantastic. Like you know, um, maybe the the adjustment of stick length improved your mechanics. Um, you know, I don't know. Like you know, there's there's no right or wrong answer. My only my only like thing is you know, uh, and that is actually something that's a good idea. Is shoot with different curves, different lies, different lengths, different flexes, because you'll know. If you're, if you're getting your mechanics right, if you're starting to get your mechanics right, by um, the quality of your of your shot. So, okay. <laughs> uh, 
Perfect. Um, yeah, so, uh, yeah, that was kind of my main thing uh, for today, is that everything popular is wrong. I've gone a little bit longer than I uh, promised I would, but um, any other quick questions before I go here? So, you know, I'll give you guys a few more seconds to, to fire some questions at me. Um, look, let me, let me paint a picture for you again. Um, I see this everywhere. I'm, I, I actually just got off the phone last night with a player. Really upset me because uh, a coach was telling this player all the wrong stuff. <laughs> Literally all the wrong stuff. And, you know, emotionally, um, emotion, I'm going to, I'll get to your question in a second here. Emotionally, uh, you know, focus wise, um, you know, um, skill wise, he's getting told all the wrong stuff and he was to so down on himself. He had no self-esteem. Um, I could just hear it in his voice. He didn't even want to talk about hockey, uh, really. Um, but like you can take control, right? If you use the, if you, if you find the advice that works, there's advice out there that works. And I experimented with all the stuff that doesn't work to figure out what does work. Um, I'm telling you the feeling, the feeling of finding the stuff that works and making that progress, um, very, very fast, um, and effortlessly is just an amazing experience. So I got a few more questions. I'll get to those. Um, I also have. Um, I also have a question for my skating. I'm a big guy for my age, and I'm often not considered the fastest. That's what I really would like to work on. So, what would be the best thing to work on? Okay, so there's a couple things. Um, so, in the in the membership area, um, I have a course called Explosive Skating Speed, and um, it, it literally will walk you through all the off ice exercises. Um, it's an eight week program that you'll have access to, but you can get, you can do it in eight days if you want. Um, and so what it has is all the off ice exercises to, um, basically improve your skating speed. Like, um, I, um, like, uh, like, I think I've said this before, I could squat a ton. I can still squat quite a bit if I'm not boasting too much, but I could squat a lot. I could deadlift a, a ton, but I was doing it, um, you know, I, I think I sort of said it like with brute force, tons of tension, um, and the incorrect mechanics. And it wasn't until later on in my career when I realized, and I, and I was working with some really good strength coaches, I'm telling you, like I would work out every day, you know, hour and a half, two hours, balls to the wall. Tension, 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 work harder. And then, and I was fast. I was always naturally fast. Um, but it wasn't until I, I came across uh, another coach later in my career, or a, a few like really high end strength and conditioning coaches, and they're saying, You're not recruiting your core properly. You don't have the right mechanics on these few simple movements. You nail those simple movements, and your speed is going to go, Poof! and your strength, your lifts, and all that are also going to go up. So, um, uh, you know, that's, that's, um, so getting the right off ice exercises and it's not working harder. You can also work hard, but it's just doing the right off ice exercises. So I go over the exact details of that in the explosive skating speed program. Um, the Romanian deadlift is key. Your step up is key. Your posture is key and your mobility is key. So that's the off ice side. The second side is, um, understanding the, the hip scissor motion because that's going to take your um, skating to the next, like the next level. So I show that, I just briefly touch on it in my latest McDavid video, so check that out, it's free. That's the free one, uh, to, you know, how to skate like McDavid. Um, and I talk about the hip scissor that he uses. And, um, and if you learn to apply that, you can get a ton more speed without, you know, like, we can isolate, we can say no off ice training. If you just work on the hip scissor, you understand the hip scissor. Um, and you also look at Carlson's effortless stride guide. You look at those two things and you work on the mechanics. 
you can literally in an instant, you don't have to change any strength, you can get way faster, okay? Um, so, yeah, best thing to work on would be look at the Carlson Effortless Stride Guide, learn the hip scissor, um, and, and, then, and then get the off-ice training that's going to make a difference, right? More squats, more deadlifts, you're going to be, you know, you're going to be, we're going to be talking incremental gains, right? Um, do the right exercises, bang, you're going to see big jumps. It's going to feel way better. Uh, you're going to feel way more powerful. And then you learn the hip scissor um, and the 45 degree stepping. And that's going to make another um, big difference. So that's what I suggest um, that you work on. And, and you don't have to fight it. You don't have to work uphill. I'm telling you, there's an easier way to do it. Uh, just go downhill, aim your bike downhill and just whoosh, coast. Um, yeah, I hope that answers your question. Let me know if you have any other questions. Um, coaches told me the stick is way too short, lies wrong, etc. I play two practices and they were stunned. Yeah, like I said, like I, I'm not worried, you know, it, it, maybe it's right, maybe it's wrong, I don't know. Um, but just focus on the mechanics, right? Don't get, don't get into the trap of um, you know, saying you're, it, it, it's your stick, it's your curve, uh, focus on your mechanics. J Dizzy 66 let me know if that answered your question, uh, or if you have any other questions. Gene, let me know if I answered your question. Um, I hope my stuff made sense to you. So like I said, um, imagine yourself right now, great, awesome, JDizzy66, I'm glad I could help, good, it seems like everyone's happy today, so, um, <laughs> and funnily enough, I, I, I hope you guys have checked out the latest Connor McDavid uh, video, uh, which is, you know, I said on it, <laughs> I said, maybe Connor McDavid is the fastest skater in the NHL. And in the one before that, I was saying, Connor McDavid is not the sk fastest skater in the NHL. So the first one, I say, Connor McDavid is not the fastest skater in the NHL. Everyone says, no, he is. Blah. <laughs> Everyone's upset. And um, I can get into that argument for another day. But And then my second video, I publish it, and I get a comment for <laughs> second, third comment going, he's not the fastest skater in the NHL. Um, And uh, so I just, you just can't make anyone happy. Uh, Maxi Skater, I don't know preform hockey. Um, I like his drills. Uh, I've seen him on uh, Instagram and Facebook, so check him out. I think he uses the hashtag Priet. I like to use that sometimes. <laughs> um, I don't know what it means, but, um, and, and he's definitely not a drone coach. Um, so, you know, I appreciate that about him. He's thinking, um, and, uh, you know, I, I see him do the mechanics correctly. Um, and I'll just tell you this. I, like the, the two coaches I pay the most attention to that I get excited about learning from are Daryl Belfry and Adam Nicholas. Um, those guys I get excited uh, to learn from. I know that there's a few others out there. They just don't publish stuff online. Um, oh, and uh, Shoot to Score. I like watching his stuff. So I give credit where credit's due, but I'm also pretty harsh on drone coaches because it's bullshit what they're doing to players, um, and it's bullshit what they're doing to parents, and that shouldn't exist. And you know the people who are making an actual difference um, are the people I like to support. So uh, shoot to score, I, I really like him. Um, Belfry obviously, Adam Nicholas, and uh, yeah, preform. Preforms drills are they're good. They're not they're not drone coach drills, and I I uh, I really appreciate that. Um, so, and you know I think you know the other guy is, is um, um, those like those are those are the the main guys, and then and then the other coaches I look at are in other sports. Like um, they really interest me. Like um, uh, what's the guy's name? Marcelo Garcia. Uh, and Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, you know, John Wooden, obviously. Um, uh, 
uh, you know, I'm talking guys who publish stuff, right? Uh, Ido Portal, I really like. If you guys know any other good coaches in other sports, other realms, um, very interested in that. So let me know. I just had uh, one of my uh, clients um, send me a great TED Talk the other day, which I have to get to, but um, I haven't got to it yet because I've been coaching ever since I finished chatting with him. Um, but yeah, so that's kind of where we're at today. So, you know, imagine yourself succeeding um, with the right drills, with the right advice. Um, learn the magic mechanics that the wizards use, right? The wizards like McDavid, Kane, Tavares, Eichel, uh, Crosby, you know, you name it. They have these magic mechanics that um, make it, oh, Yeah, okay, so G to Z, you got an off-ice slide board. So is there any drills you can do in that to improve your speed? Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, one of the issues with the off-ice slide board is that it doesn't really um, teach the scissor. Um, it actually focuses on, like, this hip um, adduction. So... This, right? So that's hip adduction, whereas your power comes from hip extension. Um, so that's why the hip scissor is so friggin' good, is because um, it actually, the hip scissor, you twist your hips and then you push uh, back in, in a hip extension instead of this leg um, abduction. Uh, so, you know, if you're gonna use the slide board, the, the issue is that it forces you, it, it doesn't force you, but it suggests you should go into this ad, abduction, right? And I think, yeah, abduction. I think I said adduction before, but it's supposed to be abduction. It forces you into that instead of using that um, hip swivel maneuver, which is going to give you, like, I'm not talking, like, I, I, I'm talking order of magnitude, power, and uh, speed improvements when you learn to use the hip scissor properly. Um, so um, you can use the slide board, but just make sure you're using the right mechanics of the, the, the hip swivel. Now, Jay Dizzy, I don't know, are you a member? Because um, like I say, like it, it's literally all laid out for you in the membership area. And you, know, you can get a free trial. Um, you, know, I, you know, I assume you're committed to getting better. Um, and you know, sometimes people balk at bringing out the credit card, at um, you know, asking their parents for money or whatever. Um, but really, in the long run, uh, the money is going to, you know, the money spent is going to save you a ton of time and money and energy down the line. And I literally have it laid out every single video you need, um, step by step. So you got the office, office explosive skating speed. All the drills, boom, 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 boom. Step by step, it cannot be easier to learn. And then I also have how to skate like Jack Eichel, how to skate like Connor McDavid. Um, and it's literally laid out for you step by step by step. Um, so, um, yeah, so I, I, I would suggest going there. Like I, I, I have made it as, as easy as possible for um, all, all players to, to get better. Um, Max, you just came back from a foot injury and noticed a huge lack of balance on this leg. Felt like I hurt my shooting. How important is balance and stability in shooting since I find it really important? It is extremely um, important, balance. Um, now, the thing that happens with like a foot injury, um, which foot did you hurt? Um, uh, yes. So it wasn't, if it wasn't available, it's because um, basically, um, uh, basically I can only, like, like, it's quite popular. So I, I, you know, I, I can only onboard so many people, um, at a time. Um, so, you know, it, other people check into, um, so I can only onboard so many people at a time because what I do is I actually meet one-on-one -on -one with, um, with each person who, who joins. So, um, what happens is, um, 
you know, I have it set so it's only letting in so many people at a time so I can meet with each person or contact them and, and, and make sure everything's uh, going well. So um, just, I think, check back in a couple days, um, you know, check back regularly and see um, what it, uh, if there's anything available. Um, so I hope that helps. Um, okay, so you're righty. Um, okay, so here's the thing to do, uh, Max, is... Um, uh, so balance is extremely important. Stability on your on your um, leg is really important. Now, what can happen is if your right foot, if you hurt your right foot, um, the the lack of balance. My guess, this is just a guess, is probably coming from your uh, right glute not firing. So, like your right butt cheek is probably not, um, you know, activating when you know it, you go to plant and stabilize and to, and to shoot. Um, a good way to test that would be to do like a glute hip bridge, um, and, uh, and see if your hamstring on your right side cramps up or not. My guess is that it does. Um, and you can even, if you have a chance, try that out right now. Let me know. <laughs> and I can diagnose you right over here for the webinar. Um, uh, so, so check that out. See if that works. Do like a glute ham bridge and see if your right hamstring cramps up. If it does, indicates your right glute is probably not firing um, and so the best way to deal with that is to stretch your right hip flexor um, I have a chiropractor I go see to deal with that but I also adjust it myself and then also get on like a um, uh, uh, you know a ball like a tennis ball or something on that right glute to wake it up and then also just basically just do butt clenches I'm giving you like the light answer um, and then if you're a member max I'm not sure if you if you are yet, um, but if you're a member, then um, the best camp for that is a camp called Injury Proof Your Hips, Never Miss a Game Again. I'll tell you a story. Um, when I was, I didn't miss a game or practice in like five and a half years due to a hip injury because of how I, how I dealt with my, uh, my hips. So, you know, people always fall over left, right, and center. They got groin injuries, hip flexor. I didn't even have a sore hip flexor, and if I did, it was gone in a day. Um, just from the simple approaches to dealing with your hips and groins that, again, no one is teaching because they don't they don't know it. Um, you know, if they're physio, they didn't play hockey, um, or Cairo, they didn't play hockey. Or if they're a hockey player, they didn't they didn't do Cairo, so uh, they didn't study it like I did. So um, they they don't have the right approach to fix it. Um, okay, what do you think of front squats as a strength training practice for hockey performance? So, um, my take on that is, um, you know, front squats are probably the, um, the you know, the, the, the best, the best option for squats other than say, um, like, a, like, um, what's it called? They're called like um, goblet squats, um, and the reason for that for hockey players is it, it isn't doesn't have necessarily much to do with like performance. It's more to do with um, safety uh, and and risk management um, because a back squat is going to put you a little more at risk as a hockey player. Um, so yeah, front squats, and, and the other thing that's good about front squats is that they're a good complex movement. Now. Um, so that means it's multi-joint, it's going to get a, um, you know, good hormone release, it's, you know, functional. Um, my perspective with strength conditioning is, you know, you know, it's one part of the dominant player pyramid. Um, strength training and off-ice training is higher up the pyramid, which means it's not as critical. That might sound strange to say. It's not as critical as having, you know, the right mindset, I call it the bulletproof mindset, um, your, um, your puppeteer framework, upgraded skills, upgraded formulas, um, and then work on that. So, uh, and the reason I say this is because a mistake I made while playing was, um, uh, while training myself was I put too much emphasis on, um, my training, my off ice training and not enough on my on ice, uh, formulas, skills, um, and, uh, um, the puppeteer framework. So, um, 
so you know it if it, like if you're looking for like the, the exercises that give you most bang for your buck front squats are one of them Romanian deadlifts are another um, bench military and a row is pretty much all you need um, and people will disagree with me on that but it's not about optimizing your strength and conditioning it's about optimizing your hockey performance um, well, we're still going on here. If there's anyone else who has any other questions. Let me know. Uh, Kirko. <laughs> um, I have read Easy Strength by Pavel Satsuan and Dan John. So that's why, so I'm glad you are informed on that um, as well. So maybe that's, maybe you guessed that after I said the Bulgarians. Um, you know, so a lot of my approach comes from Pavel Satsulin, um in just that you just need simple strength and then optimize the rest of your um, hockey game, right? Like if you, if you can just generate full body tension, um, under control with the right mechanics, um, and you just work towards that every day, you don't need to do 18 million other exercises. There's really only as a hockey player about, you know, five or six that if you can do them with proper mechanics and continue to get stronger, um, you know, that's kind of what to aim for. And, um, yeah, so I have read uh, basically all of Pavel Setsuin's stuff. And the reason I like his approach as a hockey player, not necessarily as, like, a, a power lifter or a strength, you know, athlete, is because it's simple and it's quick. And then you can focus on the things that matter more. Um, so you can do the things that matter for the strength and then get yourself back on the, um, uh, the thing here. Hey, Jay Dizzy, why don't you send me an email or text um, to, and I can see if I can reset things to get you on, or send me an email, jason at train2.0.com. I'll put my email in there. Um, I'm just resetting stuff right now. Just see if I can get the website to let you on. Um, so check that out, guys. Let me know if you guys have any other questions. I'm just, um, I'm just updating the, uh, I'm just going to open up the registration for you guys if you're on right now. Um, so just give me a second. Okay, so let me know if you guys are able to get on. Um, so I, I reset the... Resetting the website. Um, and if you are able to sign up now, or by the end of the day, um, you know, I can... Because you guys have been so fantastic, um, I will hook you guys up with an extra skill um, video session. So um, if you guys are able to do that by the end of the, the day, just send me a note and we'll get in an extra video session. Um, okay, it should be reset. Uh, just send me a note and um, hey, I'm really excited to chat more. Um, with all you guys. Uh, we say there's a main shot that should be improved because a lot of coaches say it's the uh, it's the wrist shot. Um, a main shot that should be improved. So the so in the membership area, 
I <laughs> and I, I tell you, like I pump a lot of stuff in there. Um, there is, I sound like a broken record, but I'm, I'm not joking. I've made it very easy for people to follow step by step to get um, NHL level skill 10 times faster than anyone else can give you, um, especially online. Um, because the only other person offline is uh, maybe um, Daryl Belfry. The, probably the best at that because it's he, he uses video right he uses the video that's what sets him apart um you know so uh, the main getting back to what you're saying the main shot i've isolated four okay uh in something called the finishers formula now this is in the um membership area right now it's not published as a course but if you go into the resources and into the training vault there's a, a, a um uh, a file called the finishers formula and so I've isolated the four shots that NHLers are using to score goals and I'll explain this uh, story to you or this or this concept to you um, but uh, they did this this psychology study where they ha there's this big line of people waiting for to use the photocopier right big line and so they had people walk in to the line and just say excuse me may I go in front of you um, you know, that's it. And people, most people were like, uh, no, <laughs> right? Like 90% were like, no, that's not, that doesn't work. Then another group did it said, and they said, excuse me, may I cut in front of you because I need to make a copy, right? And the word because the person said, yeah, sure. So it was like something like 80% of the time someone, um, you know, said, okay, yeah, you can go in front of me. So someone agreed because you said the word because, right? So if you look at the bottom of all my blogs and stuff, it'll be like, oh, you know, check out my Train 2.0 membership area because, and I make up something random just to be funny. <laughs> um, but um, uh, but the thing is, is that more people do something if you attach a because to it. This is known as like a click were response, meaning that um, it's like this built-in thing um, in your brain that you know creates an automatic response bang so with goalies right they have these click where responses too so if you they have these programs running in their head on how to stop pucks now these four shots in the finishers formula they use that click where response they use the goalies programming against them right so these four shots are what i'm seeing nhlers doing to score goals because it it, it seems to break the goalie's program, right? It's the anti-program to their program. So those four shots, if you practice those four shots, you will score more goals. And I'm, just, I'm personally working on them myself because I saw them and I realized, oh, that's why my whole career I didn't score goals because I didn't do those shots. I didn't know how, no one showed me, no one explained to me that um, the footwork matters. Um, and, um, yeah, so um, those four shots are, are the key, the key ones. Um, and I'll tell you what they are. I would call it the pause shot, the um, 10 and 2, the 45 degree step, and then the jab step. So, you know, if you know Bell Free and you know Adam Nicholas, you know the jab step shot. The pause shot is one I don't see people purposely coaching. They kind of do it through like cone drills, but I don't see them say, hey, these are the mechanics. Um, and then the 45 degree step shot is an evolution of Belfry's shooting in stride. Um, maybe he's teaching it now, but he hasn't published any videos on it uh, recently. And then the 10 and two shot is, um, uh, you know, one you see from Crosby, you see it from Tavares all the time. Um, Goudreau, you see him do that one. So those four shots, they seem to fool a goalie's program. I don't know how, doesn't matter how it works. Um, and they also allow you to get away from defenders. So I, I would do those ones. Um, okay, Jay Dizzy. Yeah, send me a note. Um, send me an email, and I'll see if what I can do to get you in. Um, uh, Herco Kirko. Love the name, by the way. How strong should ice hockey player be in different exercises to get full off-ice training benefits? Um, 
sorry, her co co I'll just answer Max. Oh, yeah, that's right, Max, you are. Perfect. So go into the um, dominant player pyramid, resources, and then um, the training vault. And the file is called the finisher's formula. So watch that. Learn those four shots. Um, and you will be very effective. Um, yes, so, you know, how strong should an ice hockey player be? In different exercises to get full off ice training benefits. Um, now, since the majority of work should be done on ice, there's still playing. Is, is there still a, a place for strength training? Yes, um, there is. Of course, you know, like any player, if if you have all the mechanics dialed in, being stronger, all things held equal, uh, are going to make you um, much better. Uh, or not much better, but but better, right? You know, if you're stronger, faster. All those things, um, of course, and it's, it's an advantage. Um, now, how strong do they need to be? Well, let's look at a few different things. Like during the developmental phase, right, you actually probably don't want a kid to get too strong. The reason being is if they get too strong uh, when they're learning, they abuse their strength instead of, um, and, and as a result, they don't learn the necessary mechanics, skills, deception to be an effective hockey player. Um, so one mistake I might have made when I was playing was I might have got too strong too fast. And so I, I didn't develop um, deception, um, you know, playmaking um, and, and mechanics. I just was able to plow over people because I was because I was training so much and so early. And so I did. And I was just faster than everyone. Um, so... Um, Um, yeah, so how strong, so, so then how strong do you need to be in general? Well, you need to be strong enough so that you're not injured. Um, and then, um, and then, you know, like, I mean, if you can just like plop yourself in the middle of the bell curve or, you know, in the upper 25% of the bell curve of, you know, where people are once it, it turns time to like, you know, once you're like 15, 16, 17, 18, once you get yourself in the top 25% of the bell curve, shut it down there. Um, so, you know, if you're 75th percentile, that's probably good um, because basically you have an unlimited ceiling in terms of, you know, like playmaking, um, uh, creativity, hockey sense, but, you know, the diminishing returns on strength, um, you know, they, 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 they tail off pretty quick. So, I mean, as long as you're, you know, 50, if you're in that, if you're, you know, at least 40th percentile, right, that's probably like to survive. Um, and, you know, to be, you know, in an ideal place is probably 75th percentile. I mean, it seems strange to say, you know, don't go to your maximum potential, but really you don't need to um, if your mechanics are correct. And that's where your focus should be on creativity, hockey, because uh, hockey sense, um, you know, goal scoring instinct, the finisher's formula all those things because there's an unlimited ceiling there, uh, but a very limited ceiling in terms of how much strength can make an impact on your game. Um, so I hope that answer makes sense. Okay, Stanman hurt his wrist a couple of weeks ago. Um, and your wrist and snapshot isn't the same, but I think it's still healing. What will help me with your shot over time where my wrist strength isn't as full? Okay, so um, uh, the main thing is um, with the wrist shot is like, uh, like the impact and such, um, might be bothering it. Um, and now usually the thing with the wrist is that I can almost guarantee you is your, my right hand, but I don't know where your wrist pain is, but if you, if you dig in up here somewhere, right around the elbow, right, you can, you can tr probably trace where that pain is up into your arm. Right, and then you can also probably trace where that pain is up into your shoulder, right, either front or back or bicep or something like that. So my guess is that you've done something. If your wrist is sore, um, you know, unless it was like an impact or something, or, but it's just gotten progressively worse. The problem is probably in your shoulder and then your elbow. Um, so you know, dig in around there right now with your thumb, and then you get on a, a ball on your shoulder, and you can deal with that. You can make that a lot better. So like, dig in. And like I said, the problem isn't in the wrist. The problem is probably up in the elbow and shoulder. Um, that's the first thing. The second thing is 
um, you know, for me, it was from doing like power cleans, um, I had uh, tension on this muscle, whichever one that is, flexor, flexor carpi radialis, I think, if we want to get technical. Someone could, should double check me there. Um, so that's the first thing. And the second thing is, is you know, if you're shooting um, correctly, quote unquote, um, I see a lot of people like putting a lot of boom, like power, like snap into the ice. And so, you know, it's this, there's a lot of impact, right? But if you look at like, go watch Carlson shoot, right? Or go watch Kane shoot or go watch uh, Crosby shoot. It's not about impact or this, yeah, this violent wrist motion. It's more about this, this whip on like unleashing. Um, and I go over those mechanics in the NHL code. Um, to make it gentler on your wrist, but also to make your shot more deceptive, quicker on the release, more accurate, um, all those things. So kind of a two-pronged approach to fix your wrist, you know, dig up in here uh, into the forearm, and then and that's likely going to heal up a bunch of stuff. And then second is, you know, if you're having a bunch of impact on your shot, um, that's going to make it, um, that's going to make it worse. And probably... Not better. <laughs> um, and then, uh, yeah, I hope I hope that answers your question. Um, yeah, and so if you if you hurt, oh, you hurt your right wrist, okay, and you're righty. Yeah, so that that tells me that um, um, that if you're if you're if you're if you've hurt your right wrist. Uh, and, and it's sore, that tells me that you're probably using your right wrist too much. Like, um, you're probably using it to snap the wrist. Because really, um, it, it mostly comes from the top hand. And like I said, I go over those mechanics in the... Um, uh, in the... Um, in the top hand. It should mostly be happening in that top hand. Top hand, top arm. Um... And, um, yeah, I hope that makes sense. Let me know if, if, if I can clear anything else up for you. Okay, uh, next question. We've got lots of questions here, so I'm just going to keep going. Um, let me pause for one second. I'll be back in one second. Give, uh, give me one sec. Okay, I'm back. Um, okay. Um, okay, I know there's a lot of controversy around being a one-sport athlete. I also play pretty high-level football. Do you, so do you think a double-sport athlete will help me with hockey, or should I focus on a hockey? Okay, so here's my look on that. There's no controversy. Um, in, in my eyes, um, you should be a multi-sport athlete, um, but you should probably not do... Now, like, are you talking American football or, or European football? Um, so in, in my eyes, there's no controversy. You should be a multi-sport athlete. Um, but you should not be a, um, uh, okay, American football. You should not be in a high-risk sport. So if hockey is your main thing, right, if hockey is your main thing, then don't play rugby and don't play football because uh, they, like, hockey's high-risk, rugby's high-risk, and football is all high risk. So why do we need to do all three high risk things where you're likely to get concussion, hurt your shoulder, knee, ankle, blah, 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 blah. Um, don't do that. <laughs> Decide what your favorite thing is and, uh, and, and stick to it. Um, now, you should do other sports. You should play tennis. You should uh, play squash. You should swim, cycle, um, play soccer, uh, basketball. Okay, these ones have less high risk because they're not contact sports. Um, and um, um, if, if you guys want to check out something funny, there's some beef going on on my uh, um, first Connor McDavid video between two guys. I love it. I love, I love the fiery intensity. And so I, I'm getting these notifications, these comments going back and forth. So check that out. It's it's uh, funny. Um, 
so um, I hope that makes sense. Um, the, the principles you want to learn in a sport like tennis is rhythm, uh, footwork, and balance, and, and then also like shot placement and reading your opponent, uh, like reading which way their weight shift is going, that kind of thing. That's a very complementary skill to hockey. Soccer, it's all about deception. It's all about making smart plays. You can't just boot the ball away. You can't just chip the puck out. Um, so, you know, that's kind of like the, um, the main thing there. Um, uh, you know, other sports, like, you know, for example, um, you know, archery, let's just say, is going to really focus on your eye mechanics, uh, your breathing control, your aim. Um, basketball is going to help you work on your lateral mobility, um, being deceptive, um, thinking in a different plane. Um, so, you know, like, if, if it's between American football and hockey, I'd say put all your eggs in that basket and but also maybe take up some other sports to learn and play for fun, just to understand the principles, um, if that makes sense. Um, so, you know, it, it's about risk and reward. And I see if you're playing rugby football, there's a lot of risk there, and the reward is, 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 is less or could be achieved in a, in a lower-risk sport. So I hope that makes sense. Um, what's... Um, what kind of drills can I do t to earn more PK time? Um, so there, I think it's like the the Maine or Wisconsin coach. They have a, a video on YouTube um, on how to block shots because most people have no idea how to block shots. And it's basically get down on a knee, turn sideways, and use your hand to block the hole between your legs. Um, but I think it's I think it's Maine. Um, so go look that up. Um, because that shot blocking is important. The other one is in my uh, in the in the membership area. There is a, um, a a course called How to Play Defense Like an NHL Defenseman, and I talk about you know positioning on the penalty kill and your stick positioning. Um, so I highly suggest you um, uh, you do that. Uh, you look there because that's going to make it very easy to to see. Um, and your coach is going to like all that stuff. Um, I always get shin spins when I play, probably not bending my knees enough, not enough of my thighs. Hmm. Interesting. You know what? I've never come across that, Nick. Um, normally, the uh, shin splints come from someone who does a lot of running and jumping. Um, it might not be to do with your, your knee. Like, are, are they shin splints or are they shin cramps? That's what I... Um, you know, they're, they're different things. Um, you know, shin splints come from impact generally. So I don't know. Let me know. Um, what would you say the main, one main thing is quickness. Um, yeah, quickness, quickness is often ill-defined. Um, Max, um, you know, it's, it's about pattern recognition and making quick decisions. Uh, what do you think are most important things to learn to skate effectively? Um, Herco, Kirko, I uh, um, mentioned that a bit earlier, but it's the main things I think are ice pressure, so your horizontal vectoring um, into the ice, right? How much horizontal force you're putting into the ice, um, and that's the mo the most important thing. And then using your hips and feet properly. Um, so using the hip scissor um, that I mentioned in the McDavid, the latest McDavid video, um, and the ice pressure concept, which is in the Jack Eichel camp. So um, I recommend you check those out. It will be, those things are going to, like I said, those are order of magnitude improvements. Um, Okay, so Kevin Ray asks, for a player that uses uh, their speed as top attribute, what are some examples of change of speed in order to be more effective? What are the best ways to practice this? Um, so um, that's a really good question. Um, uh, and the question isn't, the question you're asking isn't, you're not going to necessarily get the answer that you're expecting or probably wanting. Um, the... Uh, 
like let's let, like let's redefine the um, the, the, the kind of the whole context here is that if you are using speed as your top attribute, there's a ceiling there. Sort of like how if you're using strength as um, 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 if you're using strength as your main attribute, again, there's a ceiling there, right? Um, so the question you're asking is, um, uh, in order to be more effective, what change of speed drills can you do to be more effective? And so that's a better way of thinking about it, I, I think, is that, um, you know, what kind of things can you do to change the speed um, rather than rely on your, on your top speed as an attribute, if that makes sense. Um, I'm not knocking speed. I was a very fast skater, but I would rely on my speed. But what's more important is change of speed, like you mentioned. So I think we're on the same page here. Um, the best way to practice this would be, one of my favorite ones is the jab step. Um, and then also learning how to use ice pressure very effectively to be able to um, ice pressure and leaning. Okay. Um, now, the concept that I, I talk about when it comes to leaning is... Um, like Sidney Crosby is the, the best at this. I have a video, I think it's in the membership area, uh, it's not published, but it's called Transition Theory. Um, and it's the idea that Sidney Crosby doesn't actually have to push with his legs any more than another player. What he's better at is leaning more. Like he can actually get his body angle like this. Um, and, that, and this leads to, and actually I mentioned it in the Connor McDavid video as well that his leaning angle allows him to skate much faster. It has nothing to do with the pushes, guys. It's nothing to do with the pushes. Everyone thinks it's push harder, be stronger, be more powerful. No, it's to do with leaning and your hip movement. Um, so that's going to make you skate more effectively. So understanding the hip scissor, that is a very, very um, good one for changing your direction. Um, using the jab step and using the 10 and 2. All of these are either in the membership area or going into the membership area where I take you step by step, uh, make it very, very easy for you to learn um, in a way that uh, you, know, you wouldn't, wouldn't otherwise be able to learn. This was not a resource I had when I was growing up and developing. Okay, outside parts of my shins for the shin splints, same muscle when you angle your foot up and down sitting. Um, yeah, okay. Um, you know, it might, it might just be tight. You know, the best way to deal with it is to, you know, the first thing is, is really just deal with your whole lower leg. Um, so get, get a tennis ball, grab, I'm trying to look to see if there's other balls, but uh, grab a tennis ball, a cross ball, a uh, field hockey ball, or, you know, the balls I use are called the yoga tune-up balls. Um, they're very good. Dig into your whole lower leg, right? So like your, your calf, in, in behind your calf, get into your soleus, into those internal muscles there. Uh, roll out your foot. And your shins. I, I, I can't tell you, because I've never come across this issue, what the, um, what the cause might be on the ice, but um, I can tell you that, um, you know, um, the, the best way to get rid of it is with those, um, is with, with some trigger point balls and, and, uh, and dealing with that way. So foot, front of the leg, back leg, side of the leg, roll them all out. You'll find some nasty spots, and that'll really help. Um... Okay, uh, my dad doesn't really side with you on the football thing you said. He played professional football, so if you can help him understand, that would help me tell him. <laughs> I love it. Um, so um, I'm not saying don't play professional. I'm not saying don't play football. What I'm saying is that choose. Um, because, you know, if you're, if, let's just say you're a football player and you're also playing hockey, they're both high risk sports. So, you know, choose which one you like because it's like, you know, um, I don't know, I don't know about you, but if, if I'm investing in the stock market um, and, I, and I see one high risk stock and another, I'm not going to buy both, right? I'm going to choose one high risk stock and then the rest are going to be safe, right? I'm going to choose one high risk investment or, uh, you know, 10% of my portfolio is going to be high risk and the other 90% is going to be low risk, something like that. So if your play, if your two main sports are two high risk sports, right? In terms and risk, I mean in terms of their high speed contact collision sports, right? Why double up your risk? So you know if hockey's the main goal, if if you're just wanting to play for fun, you love both sports, that's fine, right? Go for it, go full tilt. 
if you love hockey and hockey is your main goal, your other cross training sport should be something a little lower risk. Um, in my eyes, because, you know, if, if you're going to get injured playing a second sport, a cross-training sport, you know, that's probably not um, a good idea. Now, I, I might be wrong here, but that's just my suggestion. So, you know, if you're, if you're, uh, if you're a football player, um, you know, football is your main thing and hockey's a, a side game, don't go play that because you're going to get a higher chance of getting injured playing that than something like um, badminton, right? <laughs> right? Um, no, I mean, we can argue about the different, you know, levels of risk of, you know, maybe basketball, you hurt your pinky or sprain your ankle or your whatever. I, this is, that's just my approach. Like, you know, I wouldn't, I, I gave up jumping off, you know, big, huge bike jumps, um, because I found it a little dangerous. I didn't want to do that anymore. Uh, so I stuck to, you know, no jumps and just staying on the trails and, and, um, uh, you know, I chose not to elevate my risk when I was focused on hockey. So I hope that makes sense. I'm not saying don't play football. I'm not saying it's not, it's a bad cross training sport. It's a very good cross training sport. What I'm saying is choose if your focus is hockey, choose uh, lower risk cross training activities. If your focus is football, probably also choose lower risk cross training activities. Um, okay. Um, maybe like last couple questions here. Um, this has gone on about an hour and 45 minutes longer than I thought. Um, okay. What do you think of quick feet and footwork drills to improve skating? I found that most important in crossovers after weight transfer, but what do you think? Um, I think, you know, again, like, uh, know why you're doing these uh, quick feet and footwork drills. So footwork in terms of like patterning, like, you know, left foot, right foot, like shifting your weight um, and like being able to like move them, I think is is fantastic. And tennis is a great sport for that because you have to like naturally understand your body and where to place your feet in the right pattern um, to improve your skating. So, you know, it, it, it's all about patterning, understanding your body, blah, blah, blah. Um, quick feet drills you know, uh, they're, they're just not correctly named. If you, if we're talking quick feet drills to focus on the bounciness, um, off the ground, then that's, that, that's, um, that is a good thing. Um, the problem is when people are like, Oh, I need to do quick feet to get faster. That is not like this as much of a direct, direct correlation as people think. Like, I'm getting like into the weeds here, but, uh, I'm just letting you know my thoughts. Um, but yeah, for a crossover, the, the most important things are, uh, you know, leaning, weight transfer, pushing through the heels, um, and understanding what the linear crossover is instead of just like your normal circular crossover. And footwork drills are fantastic for um, uh, footwork drills are fantastic. You know, when it comes to patterning, right, and teaching your body to shift weight in the right in the right way. Um, Nick C, for someone who isn't playing super often, maybe two to four times a month, how would you recommend staying in? hockey skating shape without actually playing hockey or skating very often. First thing I do, Nick, is um, uh, go to the membership area, check that out because I have a like a gajillion videos on um, uh, on uh, like a, a camp called, um, uh, what's it called? Injury Proof Your Hips. Um, so, I mean, the main thing you probably want to do is, is not get injured, right? Have hips that are functional and work great and just simply don't get injured. And, um, and so all the exercises and drills and stuff are stuff you can do just literally day to day, moment to moment. And, you know, you can, um, you can use them to get in, uh, to, to keep your hips very, very happy. Um, and then staying in hockey skating shape. So, you know, if your hips are happy, pretty much everything else is happy. And the next thing you're going to talk about is probably like conditioning, right? Um, and so, you know, something like uh, Herko Kirko's um, Pavel Setsulin book, right? So doing like a very simple strength routine, right? And and the, the simplest, most simple is two exercises. And you can do two to three reps a day, two to three sets. And that's the deadlift and the military press. If you, uh, so if you just do those two exercises, that's very, very easy. Um, and then um, 
And then the other thing is, is conditioning. You know, I recommend high-intensity interval training, uh, but most people don't know what the hell high-intensity interval training is, even though they say it all the time. They think they know what it is. Um, and what the uh, high-intensity interval training is not is like a, is a stupid circuit and um, not catching your breath and working yourself uh, into the ground. That is not... Um, high-intensity interval training, and everyone thinks it is, high-intensity interval training is actually going at 95 to 100% of, of your top speed and of your top heart rate. So it is doing high, high, high speed sprints, like your full speed, and resting a lot until you are 100% fresh to go again. Um, now, if you are not used to doing these high speed sprints, um, then you know be careful you don't pull anything so start at you know like 70 80 90 and work your way up you know over the course of a few weeks but the thing is is if you don't have a ton of time using high intensity interval training will get you in way better shape than you think you're not even going to think you're in shape but you won't be in shape um so those three things how do you injury or how to uh, what's it injury proof your hips how to never miss a game in the camp in the membership area check that out that's the first one. Second one is um, what I say, Easy Strength by Pavel Setsulin. Um, if you are a member, you can use TrainBot, and TrainBot is going to give you simple, easy workouts um, through text. Um, there's that. And then the third one is High Intensity Interval Training. And um, Covert Hockey Conditioning Methods is coming into the membership area very soon. Uh, Herko Kirko, thank you very much. I appreciate the support. Max, um, Thank you very much. I appreciate that as well. Oh, how would you train? Quick one. Okay, last one. Last one. Thank you very much for watching and thank you for the questions. I really appreciate it. Oh, and in the mem when you're a member, um, I actually do a, a weekly talk just like this with all the members. Um, and um, we're actually face-to-face -face talking. You guys can jump on the call. And, um, and so we do that every week. I have that set up every week. You can send me your questions. I answer them. Um, and, and put it right in the membership area for you. Uh, it's literally the fastest way to learn um, anything in hockey. It, well, not anything, the things that matter. Um, and so Herko Kirko wants to know, uh, how would you train to have better vision and awareness when on ice and playing a game? The first one is shoulder checks. Um, most people don't do that. So that's kind of like the... Um, um, uh, you know, like that's like the, 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 the simplest, most critical thing. Um, shoulder check more, look around more. Um, that's the first one that'll, that will really help. You'll be surprised. You video yourself, right? Part of the accelerated learning framework, video yourself and just look how much you're shoulder checking and look and then compare yourself to NHL players and look how much they are shoulder checking. Um, and that's going to make a huge difference. Um, in terms of the other stuff, um, is tying your stick handling into your skating to simplify your stick handling. Uh, most people who have really good hands get into trouble because they try to stick handle too much. But, but being deceptive, deking isn't about stick handling. Being deceptive and deking is about uh, footwork and, and hip deception. Um, and um, uh, what was I saying? So tying your hips into your tying your hips and stride into your stick handling is going to make it easier. It's going to reduce the cognitive load on your brain so that you can uh, actually uh, use your attentional resources to um, uh, see the ice better. Um, that information is in the Hips Don't Lie course in the Train 2.0 membership area. And could I briefly explain the hip scissor? Yes, but you know what will do a better job is Connor McDavid. Um, so Michael, if you go to the free training area, the, 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 I have the, the video there, uh, which explains it. So it's train 2.0.com slash free dash training. It's free to, tr free to sign up. I have the video, which explains the hip scissor. Um, and then if you want to continue on to the membership area, um, I have the step-by-step -step on ice drills, uh, to do it, which is going to be, which is friggin' awesome. It's very easy. I teach it to all the kids. Uh, they get it, they learn it, they do awesome, great stuff. So, hey guys, thank you guys very much for watching. Um, this seemed like a really good time. So I'm going to try and do this again tomorrow at the same time. No, tomorrow's Saturday. 
Monday. We'll try and do it Monday at the exact same time. Um, hope that hope that works. Um, Jay Dizzy, hope you sent me an email um, so I can get back to you, get you um, a spot because you've been fantastic here. Everyone else, check it out. Um, like I say, I kind of the computer program rotates to only let a certain number of people in at a time. Um, so check that out before um, the spot runs up. We got nine people watching. Uh, 10 people watching. Um, so uh, ch check that out, guys. Uh, get in on it before um, uh, the bat next batch closes. And then the next, you know, um, I, I don't ne know when the next one's opening up. So just get in on that as quick as you can. And, um, and let me know you're on today's webinar, and I'll hook you guys up with an extra uh, skills coaching session. So um, really happy to have everyone on. Thank you guys very much, and we'll catch you 